walk with me in the streets of Soho, Manhattan, the mecca of art and fashion. I'm on my way to AFA Gallery, that is the gallery of Heidi Lee. It's beautiful. And what are we gonna do there? Well, we have Mr. E waiting for us. You saw him on our show. The other artist is King Saladin, another artist you saw on our show. They're collaborating together with the curators, Peter Tuckman and Doug Smith, all in one beautiful space. Come check it out with me, it is magical. I am here with Doug Smith. He is the co-creator of the show and the owner of the World Trade Art Gallery. Hi, Doug. Hi, Olivia. So there's a lot of collaboration Absolutely. going on with yes. different artists and now two owners of an art gallery. Yes. Is that, is that common? That's not common at all. Uh, I've never heard of it. You know, art galleries generally, we cordon ourselves off and we do our own little thing and we don't tell other art galleries what we're doing. And Heidi, who owns AFA Gallery, this gallery, she called me and said, Doug, I've seen some of what you do. I like it. Will you curate a show at my gallery? And I thought, Really? I'd never heard of that before, never thought of it. And uh, I talked to Peter Tuckman from the New York Stock Exchange. I said, Peter, let's do this together. Some of the artists you have at the Stock Exchange. So we came here and put it together. And uh, so that's a very unique, rare collaboration that I love, yeah. How does it feel to be part of the AFA Gallery? Um, it's, a, it's a really, really cool show because it's, it honestly came together um, you know, relatively quick in terms of gallery shows and it was, it was like an example of everyone just coming together with a great idea in a great spot, you know, and great people and uh, the idea, that's why it was breaking news, right? Because it, was, it, was, it just came up. Sometimes some, some things are so simplistic that it's art. And some, or some things are so overdone that it's like, it's cool, but it's kind of like, uh, maybe not for me, you know? So art's all over the board, I think. I think it could be, you go into museums and it's like a dot. And this painting is called Black Dot. And it's like, okay, you know? And some people would, like, go crazy over that because it's so simplistic. And somebody might look at this and say, wow, this is crazy, and see every aspect of um, every brand on here. Most of these are from things that I bought, Nike boxes, Adidas boxes, um, Bushimi boxes, like all of my personal things. So that was just another reason to like add it to the show, because I wasn't going to really add it to the show, but I said it's fashion week, we're in Soho, this is the fashion district, no brainer. It's a nice feeling to be here in Soho as well, you know, one of the, uh, you know, places, births of pop art and a lot of cultural movement in like the 60s and the 70s, 80s even. And um, so I feel like uh, that, that adds to the excitement of being here. Soho would be at the epicenter of the art world. One of the toughest places to do an art show because the clients are highly educated. You are judged here unlike pretty much anywhere else in the world, right? Other than the big top A-list art locations. So this is it, right? We're street level corner in a very large established gallery since 84. So uh, reasonably, the judgments would be as high as they come. This is Mount Rushmore. So this is uh, a really interesting story behind this piece. I actually made it in 2014 and um, it's been missing. And it was just recovered, actually, uh, about two weeks ago, right before the show. So I said, I want to bring it to New York and make it the centerpiece of the show. What, what do you mean? Did you leave it somewhere? How did it go missing? Um, long story short was someone had it um, that basically did not have the rights to sell it. They sold it, and then I found out about it. And uh, it turned out the painting was in another state, and uh, we got it back. This is my house that I grew up in in Southwest Philadelphia. This is the most meaningful piece in here to me right now because me and my dad collaborated on this. After coming from a, um, from a client's house and it was like a palace. And he's like, yo, we've come so far. And he's like, you know what? 
I'm going to build our old house. And I'm like, yeah, whatever, you know? And he's like, I'm literally going to build it because he's a carpenter. So he builds houses in real life. And he was just trying to see how he could fit into what I was doing. He's at the studio every day. So it's just like, this just came out of just sheer inspiration and just memories on, you know, being on the block. I mean, these artists have worked together before. They have their own unique style. They know who they are as artists. And fortunately, I've worked with hundreds of artists over the years, so I kind of know how to bring it together. And I love letting their creativity flow, letting them see a space, pulling out their ideas before I tell them, put this piece here, put that piece there. Then there's, their creativity gets stifled. So I think it really worked well this time. Me and him were friends before we did any work together, and it just came about naturally. And um, I think that's sort of like the beauty of it. And I don't even think like our work's necessarily so similar, but but we as people, you know, vibe together. I was gonna say, I mean, yeah. is it is it different in the art industry? Aren't you guys in in competition with each other? Oh no 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 no! See that that's that's. That's what uh, people in any business or fields, um, I think, mistake that we're, nobody's competition, you know? Uh, in fact, the opposite. I think you should find fellow artists that you feel, you know, is sort of like a similar team, you know? Um, I never look at an artist as competition, just like in music. I mean, it's different, right? That's why you're an artist, because every, everyone has their own art. If you're not different, then you're not gonna get anywhere, you know? So, so it's not competition, because you're appealing, you know, the, like people have my art and his art in their collection, right? That happens a lot, so how's that competition? I loved E's work before I met him, so when I got the opportunity to meet him, that was even, that was just like perfect. So, I mean, I, I feel like, man, we got years and years and years to collaborate, but right now it's just like unreal to like be in Soho, E, King Solid Bean, uh, Doug, Peter, shout out to Peter, Peter Tuck. Um, so I don't know, man. It's like only only God knows. I don't I, I don't know. I don't know. What is it like to be called or compared to Andy Warhol to be the Warhol of the 21st century? Who did that, Mr. Tucker? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Um, that's that's an honor. I mean, I don't I don't, uh, I don't like to compare myself to anyone else. I have inspirations. And he's definitely, um, you know, a huge inspiration. So it's an honor, and it's an honor for uh, Peter Tuckman to, to to say that about me as well. When I look at something like this, I think it's really cool, but it can also look kind of angry or scary. Are you? Is this? Are you angry? Um. Well, which is very interesting. Um, this piece came about uh, when last year it was like all kinds of African American motorists getting pulled over by police and getting killed. And I created this piece in a mindset of, like I didn't want to leave my studio because I felt like it was like some kind of like purge going on. You know what I mean? It was like the most eerie feeling ever that I've ever had just watching the news and seeing uh, one after the other black motorists, no gun. Um, they didn't do anything to be killed. You know what I'm saying? It was almost like it was okay. So when I locked myself in the studio, this is the piece that I did. And this piece is called, It Isn't Right. So I just felt like if it was anybody else in the world getting killed by police, it would be somewhat of a problem, especially without a gun, especially without, you know, fighting the cop or doing something that like harm the police. So this is literally how I felt at that moment in time. And I locked myself in the studio for like maybe like three weeks and I worked on this and worked on it and worked on it. So it shows a lot of color, which I'm very happy. I'm a very happy person. But in that time, it was like I was getting distorted by, by the news, by the world, by everything that was going on. It was like it was dimming my, my light. I think he's putting these very positive messages, messages out there. He's shining a light on things that need to be talked about. You know, this one with cancer, racism, war, AIDS, poverty, drugs, hate. And then I love this mission, find a cure, right? Not all of those are actual diseases, right? War 
but maybe it is like a disease. So there's a commentary that an artist can make on society. Opening night, a gallery owner, a friend of mine came. He loved, he understood Heidi and I working together was not normal. And he said, can I join in? And just like that, we're already making more plans. You gonna give me any insight of that? Free Richardson, I think his Instagram is I am set free, and he's got the compound, which is a very influential. The way I view it, they're half gallery, half think tank, half brand merging with artists. I mean, they're a powerhouse, so it's really nice to start winning friends over like that into your vision. Yeah. I really look forward to that. Yeah.